Before we begin, I just want to make a comment as to why I'm going to do this by long division first, even though I know how to do synthetic division. And these are the perfect kinds of questions for synthetic division. Just have a look on the right hand side of the board with me. When it comes to methods in mathematics, and you learn like, I've got all these different ways that I can do something, right? Um, you need to understand how they relate to each other. So for instance, when you think about long division and synthetic division, morning. synthetic is clearly faster, but at the same time, it's also more narrow, okay? Um, it's faster, more efficient, it's um, less error prone generally, but it only works in some cases. Namely, where you have factors, or rather divisors, exactly like this. They're linear, you know, m, x, minus 1, etc., right? And also they're monic. That number at the front of the x, the coefficient, is 1, okay? That's the case where it's really useful. Long division is slower, less efficient, but it's broader. It works in all cases, right? So therefore, synthetic division is not a replacement for long division, right? It's just another tool you want to have in your belt. It's a great tool to have, but doesn't do everything long division does. Now you need to get this relationship. It happens all the time. We already looked at one in quadratics, right? <coughs> you first learn how to factorize a quadratic. Really, really simple ones, right? And then you look at harder ones where the, you can't factorize, you can't think up numbers because they're like thirds and all that kind of thing. No one's going to guess a third in their pair of numbers, okay? So that's why we learn complete the square. And then using that, we develop a quadratic formula. Now in exactly the same way, quadratic formula, even though it's like, wow, great, I don't have to think about it. I just like put the formula down and substitute my A, B, and C in. The quadratic formula is still not a replacement for these skills, right? Factorizing, sometimes you need to always be able to factorize something. It has nothing to do with a quadratic. Uh, and secondly, completing the square, you often need to do that. The classic example is if you get a, an equation like this, uh, 2x plus 4y, sorry, just thinking, minus 50. Okay. Now, I know you haven't really seen encountered equations like this much before, but can anyone guess if we were trying to graph this, what would you guess that that thing would look like? It's going to be a circle, right? In fact, what this is, is like an expanded, jumbled up version of this kind of thing, right? Uh, x plus something squared, y plus something else squared, and then you've got your radius squared over there. It's just been all, well, I expanded the brackets and then everything has been mixed up, okay? Now to unmix them, to go from here to here, the only path that you have is completing the square. The quadratic formula, not going to help you, okay? So as a result, these methods here, even though they're like, oh, they're better in some ways, right? They're not replacements for the earlier methods. We still need to know how to do long division, okay? So as a result, and also for the benefit of anyone who, um, who missed Tuesday's lesson, I'm going to do this one by long division, and then we'll do it by synthetic just to confirm that we got it right, okay? So doing it long, what's the first thing I'm going to write down having already set up the division process? What, gonna, what am I going to put right at the top? Square. It's going to be an x squared, right? Because the question I'm answering is, how many times does x fit into x cubed? The answer is x squared times. You multiply it back. Yep, now what do I do? I'm doing a subtraction here, right? So there's a double negative. That's the thing I'm trying to avoid, actually. So minus 3x plus x squared, that sounds like minus 2x squared to me. Bring down the minus 6x, and now what? The process begins again, doesn't it, right? What am I going to write at the top? Minus 2x. Do you include that sign there? Fantastic. Okay. Multiply back, which gives you minus 2x squared plus 2x. Okay. Do another subtraction, which leaves me with minus 8x. Good. Negative 8x. Minus 2. This is the last one. How many times it go in? Minus 8. And then I'm doing this last step to work out, okay, this is going to be minus 8x plus 8. So this is minus 10, it looks like to me. What does that minus 10 indicate again? Very good, the remainder. So I'll stick that up here, okay? Shall we just simply confirm that? Make sure we know what we're doing here. Um, what is the number I'm going to write at the front? I'll still want. Yeah, it's the, it's the number right there, minus whatever that number is, okay? And then I write down my coefficients. So I'm gonna go one, negative three, negative six, negative two. Okay, so if you missed Tuesday, then hold on to your hat for a second. I'm not going to explain this right now. You can go back to when, um, you can go back to someone else's notes to see it, but I'm just gonna go ahead, right? You tell me if I'm doing it right. First number, I just write it down. 
okay? And now begins my repeated, my cycle, right? Multiply, add. Multiply, add. Multiply, add. Did I nail it? x squared minus 2x minus 8 remainder negative 10 looks good to me okay so that's good I'm done now this next question that I'm asking calls back to your function notation language right when you see this p of 1 what does that mean in this context very good it's a substitution step right so this is how I'm defining p the polynomial so p of 1 means everywhere I saw an x I'm gonna stick a 1 in okay so let's just quickly do that I'm going to rub off this example. This is part B. P of 1. Okay, so let's give this a crack. I'm just doing a straight substitution into this guy, right? So that's going to be 1 cubed, which is 1. Uh, take away 3 times 1 squared, which is 1. <laughs> take away 6 lots of 1. Take away 2. Yeah? Let's just tidy it up a little bit. 1, take away 3, take away 6, take away 2. 3, 6, and 2 are 11, right? So that's 1 take away 11, which is minus 10. Okay. Now, what do part A and part B have to do with each other? Uh, I'm not going to tell you just yet. We're going to do C and D first before I do that. But you should always scratch your head a little bit when you see one maths question, right, with multiple parts that don't seem to have anything to do with each other, right? They do have something to do with each other. In fact, that's, all, that's what I'm testing for. Can we, can we dig a little deeper and see, okay, is there a connection here and why is that connection there? What's that? That's right. Okay, let's have a go. And this time we're going to go straight to synthetic because it's, you know, a hundred times faster. Let's go to C, okay? Help me out, what numbers am I going to go for? This is a bit sneaky up because I've got x plus 2 here, right? Yeah, I'm going to put down negative 2, that's my number out the front. Ta-da! And then out come my coefficients. They're the same ones that I had in the, in the beginning, right? So 1, negative 3, negative 6, negative 2, okay? This time I'll slow down and you can help me out a little bit, okay? First step is I write down, I just write down the leading coefficient, that's 1, okay? And here comes my cycle step, the one I repeat over and over again, which is multiply negative 2, right? And then add, what's the sum of these two? Negative 5. Okay, good. Then I multiply, which gives me 10, and then I add, which gives me 4. Very good. Last one, multiply, which gives me, and then I add, which gives me, okay. You happy with that? Now, remember, we, we did all of this with just the coefficients, so I need to translate, don't I, right? So again, we're dividing a cubic by a linear factor, right? So what you're going to end up with, just like we had here and here, is a quadratic, right? So this is going to be x squared, take away 5x, plus 4, remainder negative 10. You happy with that? Okay, now let's just quickly have a crack at the last question, p of negative 2. Okay, again, it's just a straight substitution. Let's see what happens, okay? You see how up here, even though it's kind of like, it seems like it was a bit unnecessary, because the number I put in was just 1, right? You're like, why did I bother writing now 1 squared is 1, okay? Well, the idea is I want to demonstrate I know how substitution works, okay? So that's going to help me down here where it's a little more complicated. So I've got my x cubed, that's the first substitution. I've got my 3x squared, there's my second one, 6x. Minus 2. Okay, you happy with that? Does it look okay? Yeah. Can someone give me the next line? What is minus 2 cubed? Eight minus now, watch out, watch out. There's uh, 2 cubed, which we know is 8, but there are 3 minus signs that come along for the ride. Right? 3 of them. 2 of them are going to cancel, and that leaves you with just 1. Right? So minus 8. Okay, here we go. Minus 3 times. This is minus 2 times minus 2, which is 4. Minus 6 times minus 2, which is 12. And minus 2. You good with that? How are you feeling? Did I do it too quickly? Just make sure I get this again, right? Minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2. That gave me negative 8. Minus 2 times minus 2. That gave me 4. Um, here I didn't have lots of minus 2s flying around, so I just did those two together, and that gave me 12. 
and the negative two is hanging out on the end. You happy now? Yeah. Okay. I'm almost there. Um, I see that this guy here and this guy here are just negatives, negatives of each other. Yeah. So I, they they just cancel. Is that okay? That leaves me with minus eight, minus two. Ta-da! I'm done. <laughs>